So this is actually going to be my daily driver. I know it doesn't look like it's going anywhere, but the engine is fine, the transmission is fine. Uh, I removed some parts so it's not drivable at the moment, uh, but this is what I'm gonna be turning into my daily driver. Um, it needs a lot of work though. And I have three of these and they're all in shambles. Let me show you. So, I mean, first of all, obviously we have this guy. This is the project. It's missing some doors. I sold one of these doors, either the left or the right side. And then the other one I removed because I'm going to switch out all the doors and replace them with the doors from the parts car. So where is the parts car? And then this has damage on the back. There's extra seats, there's extra parts. Um, then a bunch of damage on the um, radiator support area. And it got crunched in really bad over there. There's actually a hole um, right near the strut tower that shouldn't be there. So there's things to repair, obviously. And this has been sitting for months and it's been taken apart and there's debris collecting. So I'm kind of scared of it uh, no longer being good, of seals breaking, of seals turning bad. I think they're still okay, but I'm gonna have to start work and be pretty expedient about it. The black bumper was on my daily and this is gonna go on it now because the daily is an automatic and I'm trying to build this one. This is a manual so that I can sell the automatic one but the automatic's got its own issues. Um, this is the parts car. I'm gonna strip this down completely, uh, put all the bad parts on it, and then have it hauled off to the junkyard. Um, and that is the daily. It's gonna, it's got like cooling issues. It will overheat sometimes if I go on like a long trip and there's a lot of hills. Um, so I'm gonna try and figure out what's going on with that. It might be fan, electrical related, or I think there's also some leaks. I don't know. Could be a bad water pump. There's a bunch of things it could be. Uh, it's lowered on Tane coilovers. And I got some spacers on it as well to help with the wheel gap being so gnarly because the wheel gap is quite gnarly on these things. If you can see, I don't know if you can see the spacer, but it's in there. I got a quarter inch spacer up at the front and an inch spacer at the back. And that helps a lot with just the general look of it. It's a lot more flush, a lot nicer. Um, but all of that stuff is going to end up going on the orange car. And then I'm going to put this back to stock and um sell it that's the future for this one all right here i basically just want to catch you up on what's been going on with this uh car um not that you know this is essentially the introduction of this orange car as a project for me um but i just kind of i've been recording random footage for the last couple of months so i just want to sort of compile it all here and kind of get you caught up on where this thing is currently um this is me kind of putting the suspension back together a little bit just so i can get it moved to a new spot so that i can put the silver parts car into this spot uh to get that worked on as well so this was interesting uh, because I wanted to get, um, basically I'm just putting springs back in here just so I'm able to move it. I'm not putting any struts in, just like springs so they can hold up the vehicle while I move it. Uh, it's pretty funny because it ended up getting, like, it ended up being super bouncy in the rear. Um, but yeah, I was able to drop it and move it. So this is me doing that. And this was a little bit of a fun thing for me to do because it was a little bit of a challenge kind of squeezing it through that tiny area right there between that shed and the side of the the edge of the house there so i had a little bit of fun doing that i did remove the other door the 
the passenger side door I had already sold. Uh, so I ended up removing this door just to give me extra room to move around and help move the car itself. Um, it just made it a little bit easier. Uh, and I needed to get that door removed anyway because I'm going to replace all the doors like I talked about. So this is just me squeezing the car through. And then it got stuck on this branch a little bit. So I had to pull out a, my little saw to cut it off. Uh, so I just cut a little bit of the tree off of there and it gave me enough room to squeeze through. No problem. I'm just pushing it. I'm doing all this stuff by myself. Uh, <laughs> this is just the sort of thing that I like to do. And uh, as you can see, I made it through. Um, so that was like a little small victory for me. I was able to move this into a new spot and uh, work on it. And it's also just right in front of my face every day because I work out of that shed. So every day I have to look at it and every day that I don't work on it is just a reminder that it's still sitting there and not running, not being able to drive it. And I really want to get it back on the road. Um, so all of this is sort of helping me or keeping me uh, motivated to work on it. And I'm just kind of sliding it into exactly where I want it to go. There it is. Give it a little bounce. Um, and then this is after the silver parts car was moved into place. Um, this is me putting it up in the air, which is funny because in a little bit, I'm going to have to put it back down. Um, even though it was up in the air for weeks like this. Um, Somebody wanted this bumper, so that's what I'm doing right now, is just removing it. Um, but this does have to come back down because I have to... I need the... I need the jack stands so I can work, get the suspension off of my daily right now. Um, and get it back on stock suspension. But anyway, this is all the stuff that I had to remove to get to the friggin' fenders, man. You gotta remove the cowl. So you can get to a bolt underneath it. It's uh, it was, it was a little annoying, but had to be done. Also, the wheels that are currently on it are already sold. The tires on those wheels were like practically new. So I sold those. And um, I think I sold them for like 200 bucks. So it wasn't a ton of money, but especially for new tires, I think it was a good deal because I don't, I didn't like the wheels at all. Um, they were like these little 14 inch, like weird little five spoke wheels that come on like the hybrid Civics, I think. Really strange looking wheel. I didn't like it anyway. So I wanted to get rid of them. Um, and I had no use for them because I already have wheels for my car, so. Yeah, didn't need them. Um, removing that fender was kind of a pain in the butt too. And what I'm doing here is I was working on getting, um, I don't know if you can see, but there's like that little blue thing right behind the radiator cap. That was put, it was an aftermarket temperature sensor because these cars don't come with a temperature sensor. So I really wanted to, I mean, I did a couple of things. You see, I have two uh, throttle bodies there. So I swapped out the throttle body because I was having idling issues. I thought it was idling issues. It ended up being um, a misfire once I finally got a code reader on it. Um, so essentially I switched out the throttle body for no reason. It didn't do anything. Um, I just wanted to eliminate that as a possibility. I had the extra throttle body, so I thought, why not? The other thing that's happening here is I'm removing that hose for the radiator that this aftermarket temperature sensor was put into. There's a leak somewhere in there. I know there's a leak. It might be coming from the radiator. I think it's still happening. I think this leak is still going on. Um, 
but I wanted to switch out these hoses anyway, so I thought I would go ahead and do it while I was doing the throttle body since I had the entire like air box off of there anyway to, you know, in order to swap out the throttle body, I figured I switch out those couple of hoses that were there. Um, the only hose that I intended to move initially was that hose right there, that big hose, but there was a little hose that, um, ended up getting damaged. I don't know if it was damaged before I got in there or after I just noticed it was cracked. So I wanted to switch it out and I did. Um, and now I'm kind of putting it all back together. Um, I haven't noticed as much of a leak since I removed, um, since I replaced the hoses. Uh, but it looks a lot better. I don't think the the leak has been the same. I think there is still a leak somewhere. So I think the next thing that's going to happen is that I'm going to replace the thermostat and I'm going to flush out the coolant system. And well, I'm going to replace the fans as well. I'm going to replace the fans, the radiator, the AC, some of the AC components like the AC condenser is going to get replaced. Um, all that stuff is going to get swapped out. But for now, I just did these hoses, hoping that it would get rid of the leak that was happening. I think the leak isn't as bad if there is still a leak going on. I think there is, but I just don't know where the heck it's coming from. So it might also be like a water pump thing. I do not believe that it's leaking into the, um, I don't think it's a head gasket thing because there's no oil mixing in the coolant or in the um, oil cap or the oil. I don't notice any mixing there. I don't see any white smoke coming out of the tailpipe, so I don't think it's going, any water's getting into the cylinders. Um, the misfire that's going on is not related to that either. I ended up finding out it was actually a coil plug, um, coil plug, coil pack that was wrong and even possibly a wiring. Uh, so the connection that goes to the coil pack, I think might even be damaged. Um, just filling the radiator back up with uh, fluid here, but you can hear that, right? Right, so that is a misfire um, on cylinder one that's happening there that's causing that um, variation in idling. Um, and I didn't find that out until later. I don't think I filmed that part. I think I just had like a little tiny bit of time and I just swapped it out real quick. Um, and this is where I started working on the doors. So it's just removing this uh, little door panel here. Um, yeah, because the doors need to come off. Uh, the thing that's wrong with this door I don't think I'm going to remove the rear driver's side door because there's nothing really wrong with it. I think the front uh, driver's side door is really dented and messed up. Um, and this door that I'm working on right now is sort of warped in a weird way. It doesn't look from the exterior or from like far away. It doesn't really seem like there's anything wrong with it. But it's definitely warped because it's rubbing up against like the corners of the top of the frame there um and it just like doesn't close right it doesn't open right so i'm just replacing it um da -da. and then here before i get started on removing these doors um i needed to free up some jack stands i need to get this thing back on the ground so what i'm doing is I am um, working on, I think at this point I needed to get an o the O2 sensor out of there. I mean, currently I'm getting the fender and fender liners off. Um, I brought new headlights, not new headlights, but I want to keep the headlights that are currently on the daily driver. So I put the stock headlights back on. That's in the future. Um, and then I'm removing this, the lining on the side here so I can get access to the wiring underneath it because there is like tow wiring there that was added and I wanted the whole like harness for the towing kit. Um, 
going through my phone. <laughs> and then I'm removing the rear struts because they're KYB struts and they're still in really good shape. So I want to keep those and put them on the daily, put it back on stock suspension. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Just working on those. And I have my little walker there for my kid. <laughs> That's where it's been stored for like months. It's just been in the back of this car. Because she doesn't like going on a stroller anymore because she's too big. Um, she's too old for it, I guess. So she just likes to walk on her own two feet. Here, we have the bumper. I'm working on it. So you, I'm removing the housing for the uh, fog lights there because you can see that the black bumper that was on the daily before has silver housings. So I was like, hey, silver bumper, let me make sure that the housings match as well. Um, so I wanted to do that. And then a couple of the, uh, a couple of the glass it's not like the bulb, but the glass housing for the bulb. Um, a couple of them are cracked, so I threw those away. I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit. It's got a small crack in it, but it'll it'll ride. Yeah, looking a lot better. There's still a lot of pitting on it, as you can see. It happens over time. It's glass little tiny rocks hit it all the time it gets pitting and there's a crack on it but i put a little bit of cerakote ceramic coating on it and uh it helped out a lot so it looks a lot better let's put it back together that was that um i cleaned up that little fog light and that's going to go back onto the daily driver which is eventually going to be sold um so there it is that was a pretty good Thing. There's still some glue residue on top of where the grill goes there that I need to clean up. Um, and then this, I wanted to include a little bit of footage of me cleaning up the bumper, cleaning up the grill. Um, and then I just, uh, after cleaning up the bumper and the grill, the car was pretty dirty. I don't know if you can see it, but I ended up just deciding to wash the whole thing. Because why not? So enjoy that, I guess. And also, as you can see, the stock headlights are back on it. So I had the black housed headlights on there before. I'm keeping those for my future daily. So I just put the stock ones back on here. Um, and then I wanted to get a shot of me showing the daily driver in its current condition. And you'll hear it running in a little bit and see that it's running totally smooth now because I fixed the uh, the misfire when I replaced the coil pack and the spark plug. Mm -hmm. 
and that's where it's at. This is where we are at currently. And I also wanted to add that if you do want any small parts, easy to mail parts, um, if you see anything while I'm working on these cars that you might want mailed to you, um, send me a message. Uh, I might set up a web page or something or I might throw in like a a link to my eBay account and you can um, I can list it there. If there's something you want, I can list it there. You can buy it from eBay worry free because they have really good buyer and seller protections. So if you are interested in some parts from these cars, um, I will ship anywhere in the continental US if you are interested long shot but i thought i'd throw that out there just in case i um happy to mail smaller parts to people i'll give you a good price just pay for shipping and um i'll send it out to you